cord and the fifth thing that makes the spermatic cord different. The spermatic cord has a few different layers. This layer out here is called the external spermatic fascia. This layer in here, this white, is the internal spermatic fascia. The internal spermatic fascia and external sp spermatic fascia support a muscle. This muscle is called the cremaster muscle. Write this down right now. The cremaster muscle used to be the internal oblique. Shoot, only stop just a little, hold on. No rush. Repeat it again. The cream master muscle, this one right here, used to be the internal oblique. Okay. This C-shaped structure right here is called the epididymis and it surrounds the testes right there. This blue is the pubic symphysis. Remember how I told you that any pelvic model, if it has like a little piece of blue, pubic symphysis, okay? This is corpus spongiosum. That spongy tissue right in there, and this is corpus cavernosum. Corpus spongiosum is what surrounds the penile urethra. This and this is the urogenital diaphragm. So you can see it better when you put these two together. And you can see where it connects, but you see them better when it's actually separate. That's what I meant. This gland in here is called Cowper's gland. This is the prostate, that's the ejaculatory duct. This portion that's been marked in pain a million times is the vas deferens. This is the seminal vesicle and that is a ureter. From the urinary bladder down to the end of the prostate is the prostatic urethra. From the prostate down to the end of the urogenital diaphragm is the membranous. And then at the end of the urogenital diaphragm that's where the corpus spongiosum starts. So that's where it turns into the penile urethra.